In this video, I will teach you how to very quickly recognize combination reactions, decomposition reactions, and combustion reactions from their chemical equations. A combination reaction is exactly what it sounds like. It is when we take one type of molecule, I'm just going to say X, and we combine it with a second type of molecule, I'm going to say Y, and the product of that is a combination of the two. I'm just going to say XY. Here's an example of a combination reaction, H2 combining with O2 to make H2O. You might notice two things about what I just wrote. First of all, I left some pretty big empty spaces there. And second of all, you might notice it's unbalanced. We're going to go back and balance this equation as a way of practicing balance equations. Um, but let me first give you another example of a combination reaction. Aluminum combining with iodine gas I2 to make aluminum triiodide. And so again, a combination reaction is always when we start with two separate molecules and we end with just one type of molecule. A decomposition reaction is the opposite of a combination. So this is where we start with one molecule and it decomposes or breaks down into two or more individual molecules. So here's a couple of examples of unbalanced decomposition reactions. H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, which decomposes to make water, H2O, and oxygen gas, O2. Also copper chloride, CuCl, which decomposes to make a different version of copper chloride, CuCl2, and copper Cu. Now last but not least, we have a combustion reaction. The combustion reaction is a little bit more complicated than combination and decomposition, although they are extremely easy to identify. In a combustion reaction, we're going to take a molecule that contains carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms of some unknown ratio. So we're just going to say CxHy because we, it doesn't really matter how much carbon we have or how much hydrogen we have. Sometimes also there's oxygen atoms in there, so I'm going to say OZ, and we'll make a note about how that's only happening sometimes. And um, this molecule reacts with oxygen O2 gas. And the products of this reaction are carbon dioxide and water, H2O. So combustion reaction is really easy to spot because the products are always CO2 and H2O. One of the products is always O2. And the other product is this um, type of molecule that contains carbon and hydrogen and also sometimes oxygen. So let's make a note here that there may be, may only be CXH. Y without any oxygen. And so here's a couple of examples of unbalanced combustion reactions. Methane, CH4, which reacts with oxygen to make CO2 and H2O. And then also uh, we'll look at propane, C3H8, also reacting with O2 to make CO2 and H2O. And like I said, even though the combustion reaction is more complex, it's very easy to spot because it has these three components exactly the same 100% of the time. So it's very easy to see them. Now, as a way of practicing, let's go back and balance all of these equations. In the previous video, I showed you how to balance equations step by step by step. It's kind of a lengthy process. In this video, I'm gonna talk with you out loud while I do uh, what we call site balancing, which is just sort of balancing quickly. And I'm going to explain to you um, the process that my brain goes through as I'm balancing these equations without using the steps that I showed you in the last video, where we write out how many of uh, each type of atom we have, and we work one atom at a time balancing. So when I look at this equation, first equation right here, the very first thing that I notice is that my hydrogens are already balanced, but my oxygens are not. So I start with the oxygens, balancing them by putting a two in front of the H2O. And I know that when I did that, I unbalanced the hydrogen. So I just go and fix that. And that's all there is to that one. It's balanced. Moving on to the next one. When I look at this, I can see what we call um, conflicting coefficients. So I've got two iodines on the left side and three iodines on the right side. And I know that 
that's not something that I'm going to be able to balance in one step. What I look for in this situation is a math term. I don't know exactly what it's called. Uh, maybe the least, no, the great, the lowest common multiple. I know that what two and three have in common mathematically is the number six. I know that if I put a coefficient of three in front of the I2, I now have six iodines. And if I put a two in front of Al I3, I now have six iodines. So what I'm looking for is between the numbers two and three, I need to multiply both two and multiply three, both of them by some number so that they end up the same. And six is the number that I'm trying to get them to. So once I get those balanced, I can see that I need two aluminums on the left-hand side and it's done. And I move on to the next equation. So in this equation, I, I see another one of those same situations where I have two oxygen on the left and I have three oxygen on the right. So I've got an uneven number of oxygen, but this time my oxygen is separated over two separate molecules. I wanna try to get to an even number of oxygen atoms. So I'm gonna put a two in front of H2O. I now have four hydrogen. Um, so I need to put a two in front of H2O2. Now I need to, this one's a little trickier, I need to see how I'm doing. Four hydrogen, and I have four oxygen on the left, and one, two, three, four. Oh, so that one looks good. Moving on, um, the first thing that I see is I need more chlorine on the left, so I'll put a two in front of CuCl2, and now that one's balanced as well. Very easy. <laughs> Um, moving down to our combustions, these are a little bit harder to balance just because there are more things, more components to them. Um, so I'm going to start with the hydrogen atoms because I can see the carbon is already balanced looking at the first equation. I'm going to skip to the hydrogen atoms, so I'm going to put a 2 in front of the H2O. Now my hydrogens are balanced and I have a total of 4 oxygen on the right side, so I need a 2 O2 on the left. In the last equation, I'm going to start with the, the carbon, so I need three CO2 molecules. Next, I'm going to take care of the hydrogen. I need four H2O molecules, and then that leaves me with oxygen. I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, plus four is ten, so I need a five O2. And again, um, not everybody, don't feel like you need to get yourself to a point where you can balance equations kind of in your head like that. If you need to resort to following the steps every single time, that's totally fine. It's always gonna get you the right answer. But if your brain is able to balance equations like this in your head, it does save you some time. Um, so that is just sort of an illustration of how to balance equations in your head.